Hello, in this video we're going to talk about vector functions and space curves. So a vector valued function is a function whose domain is a set of real numbers and whose output is a set of vectors. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. So on the left hand side of the equal sign we have r of t and notice that there's an arrow over the top of the r that denotes that we've got a vector valued function and our input here is t. Okay, so the input, what goes into this function, our input is t. And that's what we mean by the domain. The domain is the set of input values. Okay, our domain is a set of real numbers. So what we're going to put in is a t value, that's a set of real numbers. And what we get out is we get out a vector. So on the right hand side we can see we have a vector. We could write that with angled brackets notation or in the ijk notation. And these pieces here, these little functions, the f of t, the g of t, and the h of t, these are all called component functions. Okay, so back in previous work with vectors, we might have seen a vector like a vector 1, 2, 3. That's a vector in 3D. The components are 1 and 2 and 3. Now we're talking about vector valued functions where in the x, the y, and the z component, those are actually functions of t. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Okay, so at the top of the screen we've got our input real real numbers, that's going to be our domain set, what kind of real numbers can we put into a function, and then our output, that's going to be a set of vectors. So here's a specific example, r of t equals cosine t i plus sine t j plus t k. So for the first item on our list, let's figure out the vector we get when t equals 0. So in goes 0, what comes out? Well, we're going to get a vector with three components. First component looks like cosine of 0, second component sine of 0, third component is just t, which equals 0. And so what we result in is a vector that looks like 1, 0, 0. Now I'm going to save a little space and just slide that over. So we discovered that our first vector there is a 1, 0, 0. Let's keep on going. So when t equals pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine pi over 2 is 1, and our third component is just pi over 2. Next, let's see when t equals pi, what do we get? Cosine of pi is negative 1, sine of pi is 0, last component is pi. And lastly, when t equals 3 pi over 2, we get 0, negative 1, 3 pi over 2. Now certainly there are infi infinitely many more values of t we could plot, but this gives us a feel for what's going on. Now let's try to plot this. Again, there are many more values than on our list, but this will give us a, an intuition about what this vector valued function looks like. Okay, so we are in 3D, so I'm going to draw our x, y, and z axes, and I'm going to label those x, y, and z. So the first vector that I'm going to plot on the list here looks like a vector that is 1 in the x direction, 0 and y, 0 and z. So that vector is just going to be pointing right out here along the positive x axis. And I would like to put that in a different color so it's going to show up. So let me just put that in a different color. I'll put that. There we go. Okay. And that happens when t equals 0. So I'll just put that there. That's t equals 0. Now the next one we had was when t equals pi over 2 and that's going to be 0 in the x, 1 in the y, and then it's up a little bit pi over 2 in the z direction. So let's try to draw that. That's going to be over here somewhere. Okay, and let's label that. That's when t equals pi over 2. And you know, you can imagine that there's lots of values in between there. We just didn't write them all on our list, and we can't write them all on our list, but we can get the gist of what the function's doing. 
Okay, when p equals pi, let's see, our vector is going to be negative 1 in the x direction. So that's shooting back through the page here. 0 in the y and pi in the z. So that vector is going to look something like this. And this is when t equals pi. And then lastly on our list here we got 3 pi over 2 and that vector is going to be um, 0 in the x, negative 1 in the y, and up even higher here at a 3 pi over 2. Now just from what I've drawn it's a little bit hard to, to envision what this looks like but it, it is a collection of infinitely many vectors. To help visualize these vector valued functions. A lot of time what we do is we just keep track of the endpoints. Okay, so these are the endpoints. And in fact, if you were to, to plot infinitely many endpoints, what you would discover here is that this curve starts to look like a, a helix and around and around it goes. We will draw this in maple in a few minutes, but it looks like a coil. It coils right up around the positive z-axis. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. So here's this idea formalized. Consider the vector function r of t equals f of t, g of t, and h of t. The set c of all points x, y, z such that x equals f of t, y equals g of t, and z equals h of t. That set of points is called a space curve, and t is called a parameter. Okay, so let's plot the space curve defined by r of t equals cosine t sine t t for t going from 0 to 2 pi. So notice that there's a start and there's a stop. Okay, this isn't a curve that goes on forever in both directions. We are going to start and stop at some particular t values. And you can imagine there's like a computer animation and like a little dot or a little Pac-Man or some sort of video game creature that's scooting along the screen, right? And you're going to start it and stop it at particular time equals 0 and time equals 2 pi. Alright, so this is our example from up above. And just to remind you, we plotted this, but we plotted it as a vector function, and there's tons of vectors, infinitely many vectors, so many vectors, our picture's a mess, and nobody in their right mind can understand what's going on with all these vectors, too many vectors. So what we do is we just keep track of the endpoints of those vectors. That's our space curve, okay? And that's the, what we want to plot now. We want to plot that space curve. Like, if you had this little video game creature, um, moving along the screen according to this function, you're going to start and stop it. What's the path it takes, you know, from time equals 0 to time equals 2 pi? Alright, well in general what's going to happen is this, this looks like a, a helix as it goes around and it's wrapping around that positive z-axis and up and up it goes and it goes on forever if we let it go forever. Now we are told to start and stop this creature at time equals 0 to 2 pi. I have started it at 0. Let's figure out where does it end when we're at t equals 2 pi. Well, let's see, around we go and t equals 2 pi would be right back here. So let's darken in that piece of our trajectory. So we kind of get to coil around one loop. And so we start, we stop, there is a direction of travel, so I'll put arrows on the curve to let people know which direction we're traveling. Um, and then we don't keep going, so we are going to start here when t equals 0 is right there, and then we're going to stop right here when t equals 2 pi. 